Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Good morning. Well, um, it is Wednesday, day before Thanksgiving. I've got a little bit of stuff I want to do on the combine here today, but uh, honestly, I'm lacking some motivation today. So, um, probably going to spend the afternoon out on the road trying to find some seed customers or prospects and go talk to a few people. Uh, it's a good day for that. It's raining outside, so everybody should be around, and maybe I can find them. Um, anyway, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get some of the inside of this combine put back together or ready to go, I guess. Um, you'll remember when we started to uh, shell corn when we were working down a Berkey there, uh, we finished beans and we're switching to corn. We put these spacers in on this uh, separator grate, the back half of the rotor here. Well, we need to take those spacers back out for wheat and for beans for next year. So we're going to take all these bolts out and uh, remove that spacer from in there, put it back on top and close this gap up so that those are a little bit tighter. Uh, we are also going to put our concave back in here, that one, uh, the one that we use for wheat, so that uh, that is ready to go for the summer as well. So that is sitting right there. So we'll have to get that squeezed in there somehow. All right. These ones here are relatively simple, if we can get our uh, impact on them. Yeah, that's the problem. There's not a lot of room, so it's hard to get in there. I got a swivel, but you lose a lot of your torque when you put a swivel on, so I'm going to break them loose and then we'll try it. So what we're doing, pull the bolts, put the spacer on top, and put it back together. Preferably without losing all our parts. Like that. And then, tighten it back up. Like that. I'll do the other two. You don't need to watch me. Okay, I did get them all drawn up with the impact there, but since uh, I didn't get them tight or uh, couldn't get loose with it, I probably need to uh, tighten it. Which I'm going to need another wrench, I guess. That's done. Now let's work on our concave. Okay, now the hard part. We gotta slide this big piece into that gap. And on this side, I think it'll go. On the other side, I'm afraid that they've slid together and the gap's not wide enough, so I might have to try and pry them apart. Oh, it's gonna be pretty tight right here, even. Yeah. going but they're definitely tight all right well I gotta spin that rotor it's catching
eight. Ouch. Okay, it's gonna go. The problem is over here. This one has slid that way because they're just pinned onto this rail so they're free to slide. And now we got a gap, so we've got to get these to pinch back together to give that room to slide through there. Ugh. Okay, I've almost got it. I've just kind of got to pivot it and slide it onto that bar. Okay, that's in place. Now we take our locking piece and slide it in there and put the spring clip in and that's in place. Now I bolt it up to the other side. Now, I just have to find my bolts that go in on the other side there. I think it's these three. But, I could be wrong. These are the three we're going to use because they're the right size. I don't know if this is where they came out of or not, but I'm pretty sure it's right. That's why I usually try and put the bolts back in the holes. But apparently I forgot on this one. Now, let's see if I can hold that. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Okay, and then we put the other one down here through the side. I might have to draw those up first to get to line up better. Okay, concave is done, ready to go. Now, you guys remember this crack we got over here? Well, we've got her fairly cleaned up. So we're gonna see if we can weld that up. Now, the question becomes, should I take it out? It'd be very difficult to do. I have to pull the whole auger, which probably means pulling the entire rethresher on the other side. Do I just take these bolts out, which lets this piece loose and I can get it lined up, or do I try and just line it up where it's at and have everything held in place? I'm going to try that. doesn't mean we're going to do it that way, but that's how we're going to start. Okay, well, I did have to loosen these two bolts up to give this a little bit of flex. I've got it relatively close to where I want it. Maybe off just a little bit. Well, that's actually got some wear on it, but um, I also took this impact plate right, right here that was mounted there off to give me a little bit more room. Now the question becomes, can I get my welder over here? Will it reach? I'm pretty sure our stick welder will. I would rather use the wire welder on this, I think, because it's pretty thin stuff and I think I'll burn right through it with the stick welder. I have to turn the amperage way down, um, but we should be able to make it work. I just think the wire welder would be a little bit easier. I just, that one doesn't have a very long cord and I don't think it will reach over here. So yeah, we're gonna see. Look, more dirt. It never ends. But I've had about enough washing, so yeah, is what it is. Well, look at that. We did make it. So, all right, I gotta get my helmet and everything else that I need and get that welded up. Okay, once again, here is my disclaimer. I am not a professional welder. Nobody has ever really taught me how to weld. I do not know what I am doing. But I've done enough that I can make it stick. So don't judge me. 
I go turn it on. difficult to get in here. I didn't weld the auger to it, so that's a good thing. Well, like I said, I'm not a professional. That bead's pretty good, and that one's not too bad. I blew a hole through back there, so I had to kind of fill it in, and that one was kind of a problem, but um, that should hold. You can tighten these bolts up, put the sensor back on. I'm gonna let her cool down for a few minutes. Okay, good as new. I need to coat of paint, but it's inside. It's just gonna wear off. So, nope, nope not happening. Anyway, uh, that should be most of everything that's going back inside. Uh, obviously, we've got the sieve and chafer and all that good stuff down there to get out yet. Um, but, we're not ready to put that stuff back in yet. And that's, that's good. All right, progress. Phone's ringing again. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go run around and try and find some seed customers here for a while. Um, that's about as much as I'm gonna do to the combine today, I think. I don't know, we'll see what happens when I get back this afternoon. But uh, like I said yesterday, I kinda need to keep working on this seed business a little bit at a time, and so I'm gonna go and do that. Oh look, Anna's home. I'm gonna go ahead and see her. Then I'm gonna go do that seed business stuff. Look at that. I walk out to see her and she just leaves. Doesn't even come and say hi to me. Man. Sisters, I tell you what. All right, well, I'm back. Um, I picked up my electrical box that we've been waiting for. And I've got my light for the one out by that um, side draw loadout on our grain bin. That project we were working on last week one day. Um, it's raining, so I'm not going to install it today, but I'm just going to open it up and mess with it here a little bit. Well, there. It'll go something like that. We just got to sit that on the end of the conduit, make our connections, and put our cover on. Okay, well, I'm pretty well done with shop work for the day. Uh, I did want to show you guys a little bit of stuff on the computer. I know back when we were in harvest, everybody was asking me about that irrigated field, when we were going to get to it, and we got to it, and it was good, and that was, you know, how does that compare? Was it worth it and all that? Let's do a little bit of our analysis on that stuff uh, right now. And before we get there, yes, those, which way, which way, those our arrowheads. Uh, no, we did not find them all on our farm. Um, my uncle likes them, so he buys them, puts them up there, and displays them. We have found a few Indian rocks, um, but nothing that's on the display uh, out here. So anyway, we'll get to that. We'll, we're, yeah. So let me show you what I'm working on here on the computer. Okay, so this is uh, my John Deere account, and this big field right here is the one that we uh, did our irrigation on. Our pump sat right down here in this corner. We ran our pipe all along here, all the way out across this field, and then the runs went across this way. So when I click on that, it will bring up this field, I think. There it is. Now this map is a tillage map. Uh, in fact, it's a map that shows the pressure on the rolling basket of a tillage, which is dumb that it even shows that. But yeah, here... Yeah, here is a map of the ripper depth from the tillage. You can see we set it down a little bit doing that. 
and what the rest of it was. There's the scale. Anyway, that's not important. What we want to see is this map. This is the corn harvest map. Now, this is kind of the raw yield, dry yield data on it. Uh, you can see our center lane where the yield was terrible. You can also see all of our uh, cross lanes there. And the thing that really jumps out to me is that you can see all of the replant areas, right? So we had a big replant spot here. We replanted all of these ends and all of these ends. And there was this channel right through there that we replanted. Pockets there, some over in here, a bunch right here and in the middle. So the replant corn really stands out. Now, this map is not super green, but look at our scale over here, right? So we're anything that's red is still 177, um, or anything that's not red is at least 177. So this was, this was pretty good. And the green, the dark green areas are over 277. So let's, uh, let's start with editing that scale a little bit. All right, so I modified the scale. Basically, we go from 200 up to 280 in 20 bushel per acre increments. And uh, that's that's kind of the scale it shows. So uh, clearly our best part of the field was in here minus the replant areas. Um, if you look at this over here, it'll tell you what percent of the field was in each of those categories. The vast majority of it was between 220 and 260 in those two ranges there. Um, we had about 15% of the field that didn't even make 200, but again, that's all replant and drowned out and just the, the fringes of the field. Um, so yeah, so another thing that I notice is that this triangle back here did not do quite as well as like this did or the rest of the field or this point down here. So you'll notice that, uh, right in the end rows that we put through there, there was the end lane of what we were, uh, that's basically, that's as far as our hose reached on our traveler. So we could pull it out to right there. It shot out a little ways and got some of this stuff that's a little bit green, but it did not reach back in here. Well, that corn wasn't as good. Same thing down here. We didn't irrigate that point. It was too short a run, so there was no reason to, or it just wasn't worth it. Um, so the question is, how much did the irrigation pay? Well, let's highlight the areas of the field that were irrigated. So I'll come up here and click this to select polygon, and then we basically just start outlining it, which this is very difficult for me to do while holding my phone. And up to there. Okay, so now it's going to um, tell me the data for everything inside of my little boundary that I just made there. Okay, so now down here on the bottom, we've got the selected area and the full operation. So the selected area, average dry yield, 236.7 full was 228.9 so that was our field average so that means that the irrigated area that i just selected was about seven eight bushels better than the whole field average and there is how many acres does it say uh, oops zoomed out area uh, 134 yeah that's about what we, what we watered was about 134 acres so that's good, but let's let's dig a little deeper into this. So we also know that we had uh, some replant in there. So let's go back over here and select a second operation. And we want this corn seeding from June 4th. Uh, we're gonna go with a variety map. Okay, so now that gives me some more options. So we have this O3R40, that's what we use for replant. There was about 22 acres of that, and then the 144 acres not seeded, basically, that did not get replanted. So it'll split the yield out on the whole field based on that. And where are we at? Right, right, right here. Um, so the replant corn went 198, the non replanted was 233. So let's select the not seeded. And then go back to our summary tab. And now in the selected, it's only going to show me 118 acres worth because it has eliminated the replant areas. And our re non-replanted irrigated corn averaged 240. Much better. So let's see, what did just the irrigated stuff do? So we'll uncheck those, select the opposite. 
come back over here. And now we're talking about 16 acres of irrigated replant corn that averaged 208. So there was, uh, what's that? 32 bushel difference between the irrigated replanted versus non replanted. Okay, we also had three different varieties across here in our original planted stuff. So if I want to separate those out into each one in the irrigated, so like this 10D21, I want to know, okay, that's where it was at in the field. How much did that, what did that average? Uh, average 246. So that variety was a little bit better. And that includes a lot of this red around this drowned out hole there that had water in it all year. So uh, that's interesting. Now, I'm going to clear this out. Go back to the whole field. I'm going to select basically just this one block here. That was good. I got to go back here and undo this check mark. So I want to know what just this block right here did. Take out all the bad stuff. Let's find the best spot in that field and see what we did. Okay, so right there, that's our best spot in the whole field. We'll come back down here to our summary. Dry yield 256.9, about 8.8 .8 acres there. But I also see that, that strip right there and this spot right here. Those are replant. Let's take the replant out again and see what the original planted stuff did. This kind of tells me, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's picking and choosing your data to get it to show what you want, but it's telling me what my potential was. Like, what could I have done had we not had the replant and we were able to push that entire field like, um, like I intended to and wanted to, you know, the perfect plan from the start that never actually happens. 264. That's what that area, that field averaged. 264.3. That's really, really good. Like really good. So, all right, let's go back to the whole field. Let's clear off that. And um, this kind of tells the story though for me is that one, we've got to figure out how to make our endros better. We've worked on this. This is the ditch that got cleaned out where Dad was moving some dirt that I've shown you. He was peeling this stuff off of here, filling in some of this low ground, and he was filling in this hole out here a little bit. So that should get better. Um, this stuff here, well, we just put tile in there last year. It's better than it was, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Trees, trees are a killer. That's what these endros were. And this was a big wet spot that drowned it out. In fact, these endros back in here never even got replanted because they were so wet. We could use a little bit of tile up in there, um, but it's hard to, for us to get an outlet right there. So, um, but those are the little things that we can do to improve it. This stuff here, this I can't get water to, so there's not a whole lot I can do, but um, these endros, there's some trees and it's, it's pretty crappy dirt right there along the river from when they dug the river out and laid the dirt there. And it's, oops, it's just not very good stuff. So, um, yeah, let's look at another map. And in fact, let's do, can I do a comparison map? Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So here I got two different maps side by side, same field. This is the replanted areas of the field. This is the yield map. Uh, instead of the replanted there, I'm going to pull up our corn average. So this map over here now is going to show what eight years, all eight years that I have yield data for on corn have done. And there's a lot of data, so it's going to take it a second. Okay, so that did take it a minute, but so this is what eight years of combined yield map data looks like. And you can see same good areas of the field are the good areas. You can definitely see the soil type differences. This is the sand ridge. And this is more heavy river bottom ground. And you can still see the trees and the end rows, they suck basically. Um, average corn yield for eight years would be almost 195. That's, that's pretty good actually. Um, however, this field has been irrigated three times, uh, 2015, 17, and 20. So I wanna go through and I wanna pull just those years. So we go over here and we're gonna uncheck 19. We're gonna uncheck 13, 12, and 10 and eight. And now we're gonna let it pull that map up and then we're gonna compare. We're gonna have to change our scale a little bit. Okay, apparently it's not gonna let me change my scale. On this side, there's no little button there. Over here, there's an edit button, but not on this one. So anyway, uh, it looks a little funky, but we see a lot of the same trends. Uh, the interesting thing to me is comparing it to this year. Like we really didn't see this sand ridge show up like we have in the past. Um, yeah, 
That's quite interesting to me, actually. But I don't really know what to make of it. Now, this, this was better because this scale is still higher than this scale is. Um, average for three years irrigated, 226, and this year we were at 229. So we, we did better than we've done in the previous years. But, uh, yeah. Ha! Huh. So now this one now is 2017 yield data. I made the scale identical to this one from 2020. And you can see we had better corn there. In 2017, we, 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 had, we had better on this half of the field compared to here. Uh, the difference is that this area down here uh, was better this year. Still red, but not as much. So uh, that's, that's really, we had more rain this year. We didn't put near as much water on. We didn't have to irrigate as much. So the potential is there to do better. The dry weather, we certainly, it just, it shows that we couldn't keep up pumping water. And uh, yeah, still really good corn, but not as good as we could have been. I'm curious now, I want to highlight out this block and see what it did in 17 compared to what we had this year out in that one. Same area, both of them. This year, 255.5 in the area that I selected. 275.3 in 2017. Huh. Well, try again in two years. See if we can do better yet. So now as far as what to do with this data or what good is it, well, it helps me know areas of the field that we need to work on and improve. Um, but I can take a map like this one. So this would be our average for the three irrigated years, 15, 17, and 2020. And uh, I can take this and then turn it into my prescription map for seeding rates for the next time we put corn there. So I know the areas of this field that I can push and I know the areas that I need to back off when it comes to um, population and how, how much potential it is. So in these green areas that have been really good three times in a row, like they're averaging over 260 bushel, I have no fear planting 40,000 plants per acre there underwater knowing how much I can push it. But in some of these other areas, I know that, well, it's not going to support that. So maybe 32,000 or 34,000 is all you want in some of the other stuff. Now this is irrigated. Those numbers are higher than I would do on most other fields. But anyway, that's it. If you guys have any more specific questions about this field and how it turned out and all of that, um, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them again. Uh, I got a lot of this kind of stuff to do, looking at side-by-sides and trials and all that good stuff um, uh, for all of our fields. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Um, but yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good information there and it certainly is helpful to know. I should look at this map a little bit more. This is just this year's yield map and see, uh, go through my irrigation notes and see if, you know, did, did not putting the fertilizer on up here hurt more or what what caused this block to be better than this one or why does it look like there's a big break right here in the yield map and all that kind of stuff there oh i know why it's here uh from from this lane north was corn on corn last year and from here south was um wheat and so that's the corn on corn hurt us a little bit up there but anyway that's that's that field and now that I've sufficiently bored you out of your minds, uh, I'm going to call it a night and go home. So have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks for watching. No video coming out tomorrow, um, but I will be at work on Friday. So look for one Saturday morning. We're going to get that corn head up here and try and get that cleaned up and uh, uh, keep working on that. If it's, it's supposed to be a nice day, maybe I'll get that lighting project finished up with that light that I just got put together there. And uh, we'll see what else is going on. So... Have a great night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Comments, questions down below. Hey, thanks for getting me to 14,000 subscribers. I really appreciate that. Um, been thinking about doing another live stream here at some point. Maybe sometime next week I'll do one one evening. I thought about doing it this week, but it's probably not going to happen. So, um, yeah. Maybe Saturday. I'll let you know on Friday if I'm going to do one Saturday, but probably next week sometime. Anyway, um, have a great night, everybody. Do you think that means YouTube's admitting that they had a problem and maybe they're going to make it right and fix it? I doubt it, but anything's possible.